Oh, it, uh, that was very simple. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was to be a flyer. I wanted to join the Air Force and be a flyer. And my mother was a very dominating woman, as you might imagine. And she said, oh, no, you know, that's too dangerous for my little boy to become a flyer. Mm -hmm. And I said, OK, well, the next choice I had, <coughs> I said, I would like to be a farmer. I said, oh, no. That's, that's much too hard work. You know, all my, all her parents had been farmers, and she'd, she'd been brought up on a farm. And she'd had the hard work of a farm, and she didn't want this tiny little boy who was supposed to be a very delicate boy, not to be a farmer. So I said, OK. Um, and the next thing that I, I, I discovered, and you wouldn't believe this, but at 17 years old, I met a, a guy who was in an art school. And I didn't know that there was such a place as an art school when I was 17. That was incredible. So I, I went back home this day and I said, OK, Mum, I've decided I'm going to be an artist. I said, no, oh, no. You know, to be an artist in those days was uh, to be something less than uh, normal and to be some kind of ooh, evil, rubbish sort of thing. You know, the artists, had, though, they were the people that went in brothels and did all kinds of nasty things. <laughs> they were never gentlemen. So I said, well, Mummy, you know, the third time, I must do this. So I said, well, I'm going to be an artist. And that's it. As a practitioner, he was a painter, but he was interested in tapestry, in murals, and he held to the view that a, an artist wasn't just necessarily a one kind of discipline chap. I held exactly the opposite view. I incline to that view to this very day. And the fact that we don't meet very often really doesn't mean that if we did meet more often we wouldn't argue about the same principle and that would keep it alive. I applied for the Royal and I applied for it and I got into books. Mm -hmm. And I, because Henry was building the Liverpool Cathedral windows for, you know, Charles Gilbert Scott's mm -hmm. cathedral, uh, he was the man who was really important in, in London. So I said, stop London, I'll come to Edinburgh. Cocteau. Cocteau was painting a mural in Montan in the town hall. And we thought, gosh, let's go and see what it is. And we found a very aged man, dangerously poised high up on a ladder, painting this mural, and he had his sketches there. And we got to know him quite well. Uh, so well, in fact, that he disclosed on the day that Cocteau was going to arrive, and he would come about 8.30 in the morning, and he was going to come to do a bit of work, and then disappear. So we got up bright and early, and we were standing on the pavement, pretending not to be too near. And after a while, a cocktail arrived. And he was dressed all in white. Beautiful white Panama hat, white suit, white shoes, white button or flower. And I got the shock of my life, and I looked at Sachs, and he looked at me and thought, he can't be going to be doing much painting in that gear. And he didn't. He posed on the top of the step. He went in and had a couple of words with the old boy and he probably said, ça va bien, oh bien, très bien, and he was off. But we got a glance at Cocteau and we didn't learn very much more about it. But nevertheless, it, we were able to go back and boast. Probably we didn't tell the truth in those days. I would imagine that we said we had quite a long conversation with Cocteau and put the world of art to rights. I had, after my examinations and things in Huddersfield, I'd, we had a drawing exam, and that was two years of drawing, and nothing else but drawing. And I did it in 18 months, and I, I came out top in the whole of Yorkshire. So I was no end of a guy. I thought I was really quite something. 
And I came up to Principal Wellington and showed him my folio, you see, and he looked at it and he, he sort of studied it over and he knew perfectly well that I thought I was just the bee's knees. And he said, he looked over his half glasses and said, now sure, is there nothing you'd rather do than this? <laughs> This was a rebel, and Janet had a boyfriend who was a cripple. Can't remember his name. Roland, I think. However, uh, about midnight, this boy came, John Boland, that was his name. John came to me and he said, now would you take Janet, would you look after Janet? And this was the first rebel that I went to with Macy when I'd taken this to the rebel, it was first meeting, you know. And I said, okay, yes, I'll look after Janet. And so Maisie was slightly put on one side, and I looked after Janet, and I took Janet home, and she lived in, I think, Royal Circus somewhere. And at six o'clock in the morning, we knocked at the door. No, no, we didn't knock at the door. Uh, I said, well, you know, where's your key? I said, oh, I've forgotten it, I haven't got it. And I said, I said, well, just knock him up and get in. And he said, no, no, you've got Dad and do that. So I said, well, you better just come back to my digs. So I took this girl back to my digs. And we sat there in the digs until 7, 7.30, which was my usual time for getting up there. And, and I went through to Miss Robertson. And I said, Miss Robertson, would you mind preparing two breakfasts this morning? And she said, yes. And I said, it's all right. She's a minister's daughter, and, you know, we had this problem. She couldn't get in, and I brought her back. And she said, but Mr. Shaw, minister's daughters are the worst 